I don't think there's anyone who hasn't said something that they later wish they hadn't. I have definitely said the goosiest things at times. And sometimes I've said things that were just mean spirited. Sometimes I wasn't even meaning, intending to be mean. It just came out like that. Sometimes I said something I didn't know a certain person was there and they overheard me. Oh, I regretted that. Controlling the tongue is a huge challenge. And that's what this chapter is about. Let us read. Let not many of you be teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive heavier judgment. We all stumble in many things. Anyone who doesn't stumble in word is a perfect person, able to bridle the whole body also. Indeed, we put bits into the horse's mouths so that they may obey us, and we guide their whole body. Behold the ships also, though they are so big, and are driven by fierce winds, are yet guided by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. So the tongue is also a little member, and boasts great things. See how a small fire can spread to a large forest. And the tongue is a fire. The world of iniquity among our members is the tongue, which defiles the whole body, and sets on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire by Gehenna. For every kind of Animal, bird, creeping thing, and sea creature is tamed, and has been tamed by mankind. But nobody can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we curse our with it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men, who are made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth comes blessings and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be. Does a spring send out from the same opening fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, yield olives, or a vine, figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh water. Who is wise and discerning among you? Let him show by his good conduct that his deeds are done in gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and don't lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition are, there is confusion and every evil deed. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. We have a whole chapter here talking about your behaviour and a lot of it about your tongue and what you say and what you do. And we've all said things at times we wished we hadn't. I've been around people who swore, who swear. And um, when they find out I'm a Christian, they say, ooh, they stop swearing. So sometimes it's possible, if you're mindful, to control your tongue a little bit. But sometimes people can't help themselves, and even when they know, they still say things. And I know myself, I try very hard to say the right things at the right time and the right places, but no one's perfect. <laughs> and sometimes you might mean well, and your tongue can still spark a fire of fury. How many people have had their uh, social media accounts cancelled because of something they said in one silly moment, or something they said without thinking it through in advance. And um, so it's a whole area where we need the Lord's help. I've got a few practical thoughts to share with you about this topic. First of all, when a person speaks, what is coming out their mouth is what they're thinking. Now all around your life, all the people around you are thinking things all the time, but you don't know what they're thinking. You only know the thoughts that come out their mouth in the form of words. And so what happens is that when you say something that gets you into trouble, what has happened is you haven't controlled your thoughts from entering your mouth. And that's why you have some people who are so careful before they talk, because they think about everything. Sometimes they overthink. <laughs> and um, But you imagine for a minute, 
if there was a button. You could press a button and turn, you know, turn on your ability to hear everybody's thoughts. And I know, I'm sure there's been a movie made about this. I, um, there's been movies made about this type of thing, and they're very humorous. But I think in reality, if we could suddenly press a button and know what everyone was thinking, a lot of people would be very offended. You really think that about me? And because uh, we we don't always control our thoughts, um, but we can we can. That's where you've got to begin. You've got to begin with the thoughts themselves, and then what comes out the tongue is less of an issue. But our thoughts are often uncontrolled, and so we think all sorts of things. You might walk into a room, and there might be a heap of people there, and you might see them, and you might instantly judge people based off their clothes, or their dress, or their hair, or their appearance, or what they're saying or doing. You might think all sorts of things about all those people. But you say, oh, don't say anything. You want to look like a decent person, but you're thinking those things. And if someone could hear your thoughts, they may well be offended. What I've concluded from this is that if anyone says something that's offensive, I let it go. The reason I let it go is because I've, th I've thought about this. I realized that there must be thousands of offensive things that people all around me are thinking all the time and not saying. So what I've realized is that it's, it's, we can't judge people for thinking bad things because it's just a human problem and everyone is doing it all the time. So if someone says something bad about you, let it go. That's the first thing I've concluded. But the second thing I've concluded is that I wanna control my own tongue, but I wanna start by controlling my own thoughts. So let's say I come into a, into a situation, I meet someone and I think that they're a bad person. I say to myself, Lord, forgive that person, help that person. I turn it into not a judgment of that person in my mind, but I turn into something sympathetic and caring for that person in my mind. So I control my thought. Now I still have to be careful what I say, but I work on my thoughts. I work on how I think and feel about people. I don't let bitterness reside in my mind. And so I try to be someone who's gracious to people, not only with what comes out my mouth, but what goes on in my mind. And that's my plan. I've got a, um, an elderly auntie who, um, who served the Lord her whole entire life. And when she was a, um, a younger, she's a single woman, she never got married and she's in her 90s now. But the last few years, she has terrible dementia. Like she's forgotten who we all are. And you, I went to visit her just last year. She lives in Sydney, you know, like two entire days drive away. And I was down there and I went to visit her and I walked in and she didn't know who I was. She. And I said, you know, I'm David, I'm your, I'm your nephew. And she goes, hmm, she, she didn't remember that she had a nephew called David. So it was a bit discouraging, but something happened. In that conversation, she kept on bringing up the Lord. She kept on saying, um, you know, God has been so good to me. Do you know the Lord? She would ask me, do I know the Lord? <laughs> I'd say, yes, Aunty Gwyneth, I know the Lord. And all that was coming out of her was just the love of God and appreciation and gratitude. And I went away from there thinking, you know what? She has so filled her heart with good things that when dementia set in and she lost the ability to control her tongue, all the things that came out of her mouth were good things. <laughs> and I think that's our goal. It may, you know, I don't want to have dementia and I don't want you to have it, it either. But we want to fill our heart with such good things so that if for some reason we slip and we say something that we shouldn't, hopefully it's a good thing that comes out of your mouth and not something judgmental or critical or difficult. One final thought. I want to give you a rule for life. This is a David rule for life. It's something that I try to follow. If I'm in a conversation with someone and another person gets brought up in the conversation and we're discussing a problem they have or a difficulty they have. Sometimes as a pastor, this happens. Maybe, um, you know, maybe two pastors in the church, we're talking about people in our church and how to help them. I never, we never discuss someone unless we pray for them. If you're not gonna, if, if there's no intent on helping someone, you should never discuss someone else. 
And um, sometimes, you know, we don't discuss people on purpose, but sometimes conversations come up. Did you hear what happened to so-and-so? Well, we pray for them. So that's a, a David rule for life. Never discuss someone else, or at least their difficulties, unless you have a heart enough to pray for them. Otherwise, it's not a discussion. Father, I want to thank you for James chapter 3, and I pray that we would have grace to control our language and our tongue. I pray that the pure water would flow out of the springs of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen.